I built this vacuum cart. We use it primarily for degassing silicone rubber. Uh, we want to make sure we pull all the bubbles out of the silicone rubber for mold making. It's powered by a really powerful in in industrial vacuum pump and uh, does a really good job. Here I put some rubber that I just mixed into the tank, put the lid on the tank. Now here you see the vacuum is going up, but keep your eye on the rubber. Never mind what's going on with the vacuum. I'm fiddling with the lights over here, but keep your, keep your eye on the rubber. We're past 18, 19, 20 inches of mercury. A complete vacuum is around 30. Now notice it's just now really starting to rise, which means those bubbles have been expanding, but it, it took 15, 20 inches of mercury before it did anything, really. Now it's really going, but we're at almost 27 inches of mercury. And uh, that's, you know, that's pretty close to a complete vacuum. And there you can see it pull all the, pull all the air out. And when the air comes out, uh, the mixture collapses back down into the container. But look at the gauge. Uh, we've passed 28, we're almost at 28 and a half inches of mercury. That is very close to a complete vacuum in that chamber. And that is how much vacuum is required to degas rubber. You simply cannot degas rubber at a lower vacuum level than that. When I first started working with rubber, I soon discovered that it was essential that you take the air bubbles out or you won't get good molds. And I thought, well, that's no problem. And, and then I heard that you could take the air out with a vacuum. And I said, great, I got a shop full of uh, all kinds of different vacuums attached to various machines. I'll just take a vacuum. Uh, my vacuum, my shop vac, and uh, attach it to a chamber and make my own DYI vacuum chamber. So my first effort was with this handy dandy shop vac and she does a beautiful job of helping us keep the shop clean. And uh, you feel it with your hands, she feels like she's got a pretty good suck to her, nice vacuum. And uh, I thought, well, how this will be, the, so this was the first first vacuum that I tested in my chamber. And it was a dismal failure. It was a tragic, comical, and very disheartening dismal failure. And here, I'll show you why. I turned the thing on, and I rigged up this little object here, and all it is is a rubber uh, gasket. It's just a rubber surface with a vacuum gauge attached to it. And that way, I can test the pull, the vacuum pull of these various machines. So here she goes. Here goes my beautiful shop vac, and she's pulling a fantastic vacuum. She's ripping right along. Look at that. Uh, well, okay. She, so she tops out it. <laughs> that can't be right. I mean, that thing could suck, sucks dirt like crazy. Picks up dirt like crazy. That can't be right. Let's try again. She tops out. Yep, just about six inches of mercury. Well. That is nowhere near adequate for the job. That's not going to get it done. So obviously, she is a total failure. So let's go onward and try more powerful vacuum. But that's just, I mean, that's just, look at that motor. It's not, the, that's not much of a motor. But this thing, ah, now this motor is a much more powerful motor. This is the uh, shop vac that I've got attached to my table saw. So I got to figure this thing, you know, that's a couple horse motor. <clears throat> it's got a big old four inch inlet. It's got a good sized bag on it. This, so this thing will pull, definitely pull a better vacuum. It's a lot more powerful and it moves a much, much bigger volume of air uh, than my little shop vac does. So good, so let's give that thing a try. In fact, let's be fair, let's take all the hoses and everything off and let's just attach my little pump app, my little gauge apparatus directly to the inlet on the pump. Now that'll give us a really good reading. And you'll see this thing is going to be, I know it, I mean, it's so much more powerful. It's moving a much bigger volume of air. This thing will really suck. Are you kidding me? I, it's, it's, it's like fluctuating between, you know, maybe a quarter of a pound three quarters of a pound of pressure. That's it. There's virtually no vacuum there. That's unbelievable. All right, forget that. Let's go over and test this machine. This is the biggest machine I have in my, in my shop. It's got, I think, a five inch inlet or maybe even bigger. I think the inlets are bigger. I can't, I don't even know, but it's, it's got a massive inlet. 
Uh, it's got a three horse motor on it. This is a serious blower, and, it, and I will tell you, it blows a ferocious amount of air, so this, this thing's got to be pulling a wicked vacuum. We'll just let my little gauge apparatus sit right on there. Sticks right to it, and pull. Again, significantly less than one inch of mercury. I mean, it's, it's literally pulling no vacuum at all, which is amazing because it will suck an amazing amount of material through the pipes and into the bag. So what gives? What's the, what's the deal here? Why won't these machines pull a vacuum? And the answer is, that's actually a simple answer, the answer is these machines don't suck. They blow. They're designed not to create high vacuum pressure, but to move a very large volume of air. So they're not really vacuums at all. They're really blowers. So you cannot use a blower to do the job of a vacuum pump. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I hope, <laughs> I hope this video saves you the pain and suffering that I went through trying to rig up a vacuum chamber that would actually do the job.